Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Um, thanks for joining us for our final ses session of the Search Spring Live series. Um, today, we are going to take a deep dive into all things personalization. I'm your host for today's webinar. Uh, my name is Anthony Krajak. I am a marketing campaign specialist here at SearchSpring. I've also included my email on the slide. As you can see, if at the conclusion of today's webinar, uh, there is a question that you have, please feel free to send it over to me and I will get you an answer as fast as possible. Uh, while we're on the topic of asking questions, I did want to remind everyone that uh, everyone has the ability to ask questions live through the chat um, during today's webinar. So if one of our panelists uh, mentioned something and you want them to dig in a little bit more on it, please feel free to fire it off in the chat and we will make sure that we get to it. Speaking of panelists, I want to go ahead and introduce Matt Jarman and Matt Barber. Um, again, thank you both for, for being here. And I wanted to give each of you a moment to uh, introduce yourself and, and your role here at Search Spring. So Jarman, I don't know if you want to kick us off. Thanks, Anthony. My name is Matt Jarman, Strategic Sales Manager at Search Spring. Uh, I've been here for almost two years. I've worked in e-commerce tech for five years. Uh, I have a two-year-old daughter and happy to be here. Uh, yeah, my name is Matt Barber. Uh, I've been with Search Spring for just over a year now. Uh, I'm a senior customer success manager. I work with uh, our uh, top tier customers in building out strategy uh, for merchandising, how to manage personalization as well. Uh, I've been working in the marketing vertical for the last seven years and uh, expecting a baby girl on the way. So uh, excited about that. Wonderful. Thank you again um, for being here. Thank you both of you for being here. Um, and before we kick things off, wanted to go ahead and uh, give you the run of the show, the order in which we're going to do things today. Um, to kick it off, we're going to start with some poll questions. Um, these are very brief just to get you thinking about the uh, your personalization strategy and your goals around it. Um, after that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to uh, Matt Jarman to kind of go through the walkthrough of personalization um, with the Search Spring platform. Um, and then I mentioned that you can ask questions live on the chat um, today. If we don't get to your question right away, no worries. That is what the Q&A portion of today is for. Um, with that being said, I'll go ahead and, and dive into our polls. Uh, first poll question is, do you use a personalization tool outside of your native platform? Uh, a, yes, I use Search Spring. B, yes, I'm currently using a personalization tool outside of my native platform. C, no, I use the personalization function in my native platform. And D, no, I'm not currently using any type of personalization tool. So I will go ahead and get that poll launched. Waiting for some attendees here to go ahead and put in their answer. We'll give it a few more seconds. Um, if we don't get anything in, then completely understand. Yeah, so no one put in their answer for, for this question. Um, but again, hoping that everyone on the call is uh, at least thinking about their personalization um, strategy and the tactics that they're using. Um, we'll go to poll two. We'll launch that one as well, just to give people the opportunity to voice um, their opinion or situation. Um, how satisfied are you with your personalization tool? Very satisfied, satisfied, fairly satisfied, or not satisfied. Um, again, similar, similar type of result here. Um, but hopefully that for the people on the call that gets you in the right frame of mind to talk 
about personalization. Um, so with that being said, I will go ahead and hand it over to uh, Matt Jarman. One second. You can go ahead and take us on the walkthrough. All right, Thanks, Matt, you should have it now. Appreciate it. Um, you know, I may not have answered that poll either because personalization right now is a huge buzzword. Nobody really knows what it means. It's the talk. Everybody has personalization. All the vendors personalize. It's all the rage. But what does it actually mean? So today we want to go through what is personalization? What can search bring bring to the table? And why does it matter for my business? Um, just some thoughts on personalization for me. Uh, I have several um, conversations a day with e-commerce leaders around new strategies to implement. And personalization is one of those that seems like it makes sense for certain niches or certain industries, uh, fashion and apparel, home goods, cosmetics. Um, but all, really, personalization applies to everyone. Whether you are in one of those niches, uh, if you're B2B, you're industrial, you're manufacturing, you're a plumbing store, or you're just a, a B2B catalog with no commerce, um, SearchSpring is going to have options that will influence the customer journey. And that's what it's all about. Uh, so as we jump into the demo, just to show a few different ways that SearchSpring can bring personalization to the table, um, there are really three different ways. Uh, On-site recommendations, which we'll talk through some examples. Uh, those recommendations can also live within email, so we'll talk through some examples there. And then personalizing the navigation experience as it relates to actually discovering products, so personalized search and personalized merchandising. Um, first piece to talk through is personalized recommendations on site. So when thinking about that, or when thinking about these options, um, these are going to be the modules or the carousels that you see when you're navigating through different e-com sites that are customers also viewed, customers also bought, you may also love similar products, recently viewed, trending products, a lot of different options and a lot of different opportunities to influence the buyer journey, influence the bottom line. And so when thinking about these uh, from a search ring perspective, search ring features, these recommendations can live anywhere on your site. So anywhere that a snippet of code can live, these recommendations can live. We'll typically come with seven or eight best practices, which Barbara will talk about here shortly, for where recommendations should live on the site. But these could be on the home page, the product page, the cart page, checkout, 404 error, zero result. Um, anywhere, again, that you would want to influence the customer journey, these recommendation modules can live. And then we can accomplish a lot of objectives here as well. Um, these, you know, on a home page, maybe we may see a trending product, we may see a personalized product, and these may differ based on who's actually coming to the site. So if it's a brand new user, we don't really have any information on what they like or any of their affinities, we might show a trending product uh, module based on what people have looked at and bought in the last 90 days. Um, as they begin to look around a little bit and click on some products and add some products to cart, we may start to show them a personalized module on that home page or on the product page or elsewhere on the site that takes into account what does that person looked at, what do they like, what have they added to their cart, and now what are some products that maybe they didn't find or maybe they haven't seen yet or we think they may love. And so when thinking about some of the metrics we're influencing, we're now talking about the, the AOV per, uh, portion, which is, hey, I have this thing in my cart, but I need to buy this other thing. So we're trying to influence that piece of the journey. But sometimes more importantly is influencing conversion rate altogether for the person that they come to your site, they click around on a few products, they haven't found what they're really looking for, but we now influence them with some similar products or some products they may also love uh, to say, hey, I actually like this product. Let me continue my journey instead of bouncing. Um, I will just note there are opportunities here as well to have your own influence on these recommendation modules. So these could be totally automated, totally black box driven by SearchSpring's personalization algorithm where you just set them and let SearchSpring do its thing. They could be totally manual on the other end of the spectrum where you're wanting to say, hey, if somebody comes to this product, I want to show them these 10 products every single time. And then there could be a happy medium where we have an automated module and it's a cross sell and SearchSpring's looking at hey, this person's looking at a shirt, they're probably also gonna like these similar shirts, but we wanna apply some context to these modules that say, don't show them products that are out of stock or don't show them products that are on sale. Or if they're on a sale page, show them other products that are on sale. It's a lot of opportunity to apply your own flavor to these modules as well. Um, Barbara, in talking about some of the on-site recommendations, I wanna pivot to you and talk through some of the best practices that you have here, as well as, uh, 
just other general advice you typically give around recommendations? Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to recommendations, typically the way we look at these is we want to keep the shopper shopping. Um, so this is how we've built out this list of priority uh, of page placement along with recommendation type. Uh, so for instance, in the conversation of keeping a shopper shopping, uh, our first priority is going to be actually showcasing a uh, recommendation on a PDP. Uh, now this recommendation is going to be based on our similar products type. And the reason for that is let's say that, you know, recently I was shopping for some, uh, you know, workout type shoes. Uh, well, if the shoe that I'm currently looking at is not the one that I end up purchasing, I want to recommend a similar product to that one to help them continue to make that first initial purchase, right? So um, to your point, we're helping with conversion rates at that point uh, and helping your shoppers find products that are relevant to their, their interests. Then from there, as I've already made my commitment to a product, now I want to sell maybe something that's complementary, right? Products that are often purchased together. Um, so maybe if I'm purchasing a pair of shoes, maybe a pair of workout shorts or a shirt uh, or socks would be really relevant to maybe increase that AOV for that purchase again. So we're keeping them shopping in that way. Uh, and then also too, uh, we want to make it really easy for them. You know, in a store, you can pick up different products and look at them side by side. Virtually, it's harder to do that. So when you're looking at a, uh, a bunch of different products and comparing them, we want to make it easy for them to go back to that first product that they maybe started their journey on. So that's what we look at recently viewed. From there, we move into like other general pages, uh, anything from a home page to zero results and four or four pages, where normally maybe they wouldn't see a product there. Uh, we actually have session-based recommendation types, which are going to look at what is your shopper actually shopping for? Which products are they engaging with from a brand perspective? Uh, maybe a certain category, a uh, certain color that they might be looking at. And we'll take those things in, into consideration. So maybe the next time they go back to the homepage, it's now very personalized to that individual shopper based on that session. Um, and then last but not least, we can go a, a step deeper when your shoppers are typically logged in. We can look at their order history and now personalize recommendations to that individual shopper and the products that they typically purchase from you. So uh, a lot of different ways to go about it. Uh, these are the best practices that we've found in trying to help with you know, conversion, keeping them shopping and increasing your average order value. Good stuff, thanks Matt. Um, thinking about these recommendation modules that we've just gone through uh, for, our customers that are on Shopify and use Klaviyo as their email service provider, these recommendation modules can also live within their email campaigns and triggers. So thinking about some of these placements, the post purchase, the welcome, the abandoned cart, the browser abandoned, um, any kind of newsletters that are going out. Uh, typically um, in the CSP, there are standard recommendation modules that um, don't really take into account how shoppers browse, how they've behaved, uh, what they've looked at, any of their affinities. So to continue that customer journey, and as Matt said, to keep them shopping, um, let's say someone comes to your site, they add that shirt to the cart, they leave, and Klaviyo sends out that abandoned cart message. We now want to take into account what are the products they've looked at, what are the products they added to the cart potentially, um, what maybe did they buy before, what have they bought in the past, and show them 10 or to 20 products that they may also like or products that are relevant to the products that are actually in their cart. And so really easy to set up that integration, have these same types of rec modules to continue that customer journey, to get them back to the site to shop. Uh, because ultimately we're trying to get customers to the PDP, to the cart and converting uh, as quickly as possible. Um, so again, with Klaviyo Rex, really easy to select where it's going, select the recommendation type, add that snippet of code to any of those um, flow builders in Klaviyo or the email builder in Klaviyo and keep it going there. Um, I wanted to quickly go back or just quickly talk through some of those exclusions or the context that can be applied to personalization. And these are just three quick examples, um, but there are more things our team can do on the back end. but thinking about, okay, you know, I wanna have control over this, this influence of my customer journey. Uh, I don't want it to just be black box modules, but I also don't wanna have to put in a ton of work uh, to the personalization piece 
uh, this is where you would apply some of those exclusions, contextual or global or any kind of groupings to say, and you, we can go through these examples, uh, if product's out of stock, we don't want to recommend it in a module. Very general uh, example, but something that is typical for our recommendation users. Um, contextual exclusions. If somebody is on a sale page, I want to show on sale products. If they're not on a sale PDP, I don't want to show on sale products. So again, another way that we can say, hey, if they're here, continue that journey through uh, with what they're probably looking for. Um, then we have contextual groupings, which is just a way for you as the, as the customer to apply additional context to your recommendation profile. So basic examples here, if somebody's looking at a shirt of this material, display other shirts of this material. But some of this context can get very in depth where a customer could say, if somebody's looking at a shirt from this collection, I want product position one to be from the pants collection, position two to be shorts, position three to be accessories, and position four to be shorts or shoes, and then fill in the rest. And so if you're wanting to get a little more granular and spend a little more time on this this journey and have a complete the look type experience, but have Search Spring fill in the products, that's something totally uh, optional as well. Um, one last quick thing, thinking about the B2B customer, the industrial customer, manufacturing, who, you know, we're, customers aren't there to be personalized or tailored to. They typically know what they want. They're searching for something by a SKU. They're hitting the product. Uh, in those examples, you're going to have products that maybe a customer has to buy in conjunction with. They're buying this sewing machine and they need these parts. They're shopping for uh, this automotive, this vehicle, and they need these pro parts to be recommended with. Uh, so a lot of ways that we can still influence that customer journey if it's a commerce site or if it's not, and it's just a catalog, but they're looking for something, they don't know what they need, and we need them to find the product to be able to call us and order the product. Um, Barbara, any other last quick notes on recommendations on site or email? Uh, I just think that uh, you, know, you have a lot of people who uh, have a lot of different responsibilities and sometimes tasks like this can seem overwhelming. Um, but I mean, with the way that our algorithms built out, you really can lean on the technology for it. But to your point in those one-off situations where you want to have that level of control, it, it's there as well. Uh, but people are looking for personalized experiences. So you know, to leverage a tool like this, I think, um, you know, helps you meet the expectations of shoppers in, in 2023. Deal. Um, so the next big way that Search Spring can impact the personalized experience is through the navigation and discovery, through personalizing the search experience and personalizing the merchandising or the category collection experience. Um, when thinking about this, you know, this is an area where a, a brand new Search Spring customer may come in and not really trust the personalization aspect. And so uh, I always talk through A-B testing personalization as a part of the strategy overall. Um, if let's say you have a full merchandising team and they have a manual way that they like to do things, that's something where you can test the manual strategy, maybe against an automated rules-based strategy, as we talked about last week, uh, against a personalized strategy that would say, uh, in this example, hey, when Matt comes to the All Shoes collection, uh, we know based on that cookie that we have on Matt that he has clicked on Nike often and Adidas often, or just two random brands. Or, or he's clicked on you know, the, this, the boots collection often and the dress shoes collection often, or whatever it may be. So when he navigates to the All Shoes collection, let's test out personalization that says, when Matt's here, he's liked these things in the past, he's added these things to his cart. We're gonna go ahead and boost the products that we think Matt may like based on the uh, similar attributes between all those products. And so that's something that could be A-B tested or could just be used uh, across the site or on certain segments or on certain through certain merchandising campaigns. Um, this is an area where, again, customers are, or shoppers are expecting that personalized experience. We're in it to really make their shopper experience easier, make the products that they are looking to discover easier to find. Um, a quick example of personalization live uh, is on our test site, bobachiga.searchring.com, where we have two personalized shopper profiles. And um, you can see that these two profiles are different. One is uh, a little more rugged, enjoys the mountains, enjoys outdoor sports and things like that. Uh, one enjoys bright colors and painting and things of that nature. And they've shown that in their shopping journey, um, the affinities they have for certain products. So if I were to load Tyler, for example, if I were to load Tyler's affinities and preferences, so I click Demos Tyler, it loads Tyler's cookie and his products in his cart. And I come up to our 
uh, autocomplete and I search for a shirt, we're going to see some of those rugged shirts. We're going to see the blanket shirts, uh, which are you know more fit for outdoor and hiking and things of that nature. And if I were to, <coughs> excuse me, go to a blanket shirt PDP, we're going to see some similar products that Tyler may like. Uh, inversely, if I were to jump out and click out of Tyler's profile and click into Ashley's profile and complete the exact same search, once she loads here, then I'm going to see a different set of products, products that are more suited to Ashley, how she's shopped uh, throughout the site, what she's looked at, what's in her car currently. And the same thing holds true with those recommendation modules where I can see that I'm on a sales shirt, fits Ashley's uh, products that she's shown an affinity for. And then we're also showing products she may like, but they're also all sale products because I'm currently shopping for a sale product. So again, a, a good way that we can influence the customer journey starting in the autocomplete where they're trying to get to a PDP. They don't really know what they want, but they have an idea. That's where the search brings search piece comes in. Then we have the merchandising component, which boosts certain products based on you as the, uh, the business owner or the merchandising team, the way you're trying to promote products. And then you have the personalization layer, which is a third layer, which says, hey, we're showing the correct products. We're merchandising the way we want. And now we want to personalize that experience within those first two things. Um, Barbara, as it relates to personalized search and personalized discovery, what are some things you say or some best practices uh, for this process? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think when it comes to merchandising, uh, you know, sometimes merchandisers really want certain colors or certain products to be grouped in, in a certain row. Uh, which, you know, I, I can see the benefit for those things. It's not necessarily saying that's the wrong approach, but, um, you know, making it easier for your shopper to find what they're looking for. Uh, and if we're able to customize these things to each individual shopper on your site, it's just going to improve the overall experience, which then in turn leads to more conversions and, uh, you know, average order value and things like that going up. So, uh, I mean, to your point, I think A-B testing is a great way, right? If you're kind of hesitant to explore this, this avenue, uh, we have the ability to A-B test and see which campaign performed better from a conversion perspective. So um, if you are concerned about those things, there's ways to test. Um, and usually when you use the word test, there's a little more freedom in, in, in trying things out uh, with leadership. Uh, but anyways, you know, I think that, uh, you know, the proofs in, in the data uh, at this point. So uh, if you're not sure, give it a shot, try it out and um, let the results speak for themselves. Cool deal. Um, Anthony, we can, if any questions have come in or we can turn it over to general Q&A. Yeah, we, uh, so we had one question come in. Um, how do you balance, or what are best practices to balance between going from manual merchandising versus um, a personalization approach? Yeah, I can definitely jump in to help with that one. Uh, so I, I would say, uh, generally speaking, we wanna look towards uh, personalization. There might be specific situations where maybe it's like a staff pick or something that you're using to kind of educate your shoppers on maybe specific products that you guys have. Um, maybe they're newer products, things like that, maybe things that are not aware of and you're trying to draw attention to those things. Uh, manual merchandising is a great opportunity to, to do that. Um, you know, again, maybe there's a, a, a brand new collection that you're releasing and you want it to show in a specific order. You have those levels of control there, uh, but I would say generally speaking, shoppers are expecting personalized experiences and so when you're able to do that, you're helping them with the ability to uh, essentially efficiently shop. Um, I know for me and my experiences when I'm shopping, if I have to go to the 20th page to try and find what I'm looking for, um, it's just a really frustrating experience for me. So uh, if that was personalized, that those results should be showing up on the first page. Um, so those would be some of the best practices I would recommend following. Gotcha. Wonderful. Well, that was all the questions we had that came in. Um, again, thank you both for giving us your time today and lending us your expertise. Um, everyone who joined, again, thank you for giving us some of your time. Um, if 
we touched on anything today that uh, caught your attention or you want to learn more about something, um, this QR code that we are showing on the screen right now will take you right to Matt Jarman's calendar. Um, he'd be more than happy to talk with you about uh, any questions that you might have. Um, so with that being said, again, thank, thank you to everyone for joining, um, and we hope that you have a great rest of your day.